we want to talk about the monsters. You're expanding basically what um, Satoshi Bulls is doing. Can you just give us the rundown on the monsters and how it's all going to work? Yeah, sure. It was launched last Halloween, uh, last last October, and we were just looking at like how do we get more of Iob's artwork out there? You know, what kind of fun things can we do for Halloween as well? But it was not just a Halloween idea collection. Can we do something in a way where we can introduce another component to Satoshi Bulls? The team got on a call and says, "Listen, you know, we've got Halloween coming up. We could maybe launch something then and make it an ongoing thing." And every time we got on a call with the team to, to plan this thing, we added a new aspect to, to the to more creative aspect to it, and it, it literally turned into a monster. But the, to break it down, basically, it's, it's a whole bunch of new uh, artwork from IO, monster themed. But it's we built, we built in these cool mechanics where you can actually like burn monsters to make a prime monster, which has the full monster parts, like a vampire or a werewolf, um, etc. And throughout the collection as well, there's also sprinkled in some very special one of ones, some bone crew we call them, which is a full skeleton with funny attributes. And then you've got also the branded ones. Um, and if you mint one of the branded ones, then you automatically get a 0.333 ETH prize. And then we've got the chosen one as well, which is the one of one throughout the whole collection, which is only going to be minted once the, all the rest mint out. And then um, going forward, we've got to tie them into the whole ecosystem. So right now we're currently working on maybe staking the Satoshi Balls and then how does monsters play into that as well. And, and we can get really creative with that. So maybe you take Satoshi Ball and you lock your monsters in the cage and the Satoshi Ball has to protect the cage, <laughs> has to lock the monsters in the cage, you know, and maybe they break out, uh, who knows, you know. So there's loads of fun things we've got to do with monsters. And then we see it as maybe like something we can really put pressure on and, and, and do really nice Halloween drops really related to this as well. So stay tuned for October as well. Maybe they're coming to Stacks, maybe they're not. Who knows? We'll see. So that's the, the kind of the journey we're on right now with, with Monsters. This is a super fun part of the project. All right. So in this show, we aren't afraid to ask the stupid questions. And so mm-hmm. I'm going to ask one. Yeah. You said you burn your monster. What does that mean? Well, literally, you you take a lighter and no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You take it to your phone and yeah, you just light exactly. your phone on fire. You, you stake, Burn your computer. You need to stake the monster in the heart and literally light it on fire. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, a, it's uh, luckily enough these terminologies that we, they use in the crypto landscape really tie into the monsters. Uh, branding here so staking and burning is, is fantastic that, that, words to use, that's right? funny but um in terms of the when i say in crypto when you burn a token either it be um, a cryptocurrency itself or um, an nft it means you're just sending it into the black hole when you send it there no one has access to it so they call that burning and why would you want to do that well in, in general tokenomics terms you'd want to, you burn things to like control the supply so if you implement a, a burning mechanism to, a, to the tokenomics of a token, it's a, it's, it then becomes a deflationary token, right? So let, let's say every time you transact, a small percentage gets burned. Well, that's handling the, the, the overall supply, which is uh, making it deflationary and keeps a check on inflation. NFT-wise, you know, again, it's a similar idea. You, you would want to burn things to reduce the supply. And if you lower the supply of things, then low supply, high demand, you know, that's that's sales 101 mm. so that's that's pretty much what it is it's a cryptographic way of actually sending tokens to the black hole like no one has ownership of them anymore so if i wanted a prime monster i would need i'm looking at the website right now one two three four i would need six monsters and then every time i burn one yeah I, so then i went from six to five i would get an extra feature is that right no the general monsters are all um, randomly generated Okay. So, so each monster has parts made up of a, a werewolf, a vampire, a mummy, etc. And when you mint a monster, basically, it'll be a mixed up monster of all these parts. And you can then take those parts and make a prime. You can have actually a minimum of two. So you could have, you could take two monsters and make a prime from that because those two might have two vampire traits, you know. So it's just okay. a, it's, ba- it's based on the parts, actually. And in the best case, you've, you've got a minimum of two monsters that you can burn because they happen to have the parts that you need to make the prime. Okay, so burning is just you basically send your NFT to a non-existent wallet somewhere. Is that how that works? We just want, I want to make sure we get that answered. Yeah, definitely. So everything on Ethereum pretty much is based on wallets. You know, it's either a wallet or it's a smart contract. That's how the blockchain works. The the, the burn address actually is called on Ethereum is is zero 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 zero. So it's like the, the first ever wallet, and nobody has ownership of that wallet. It's a completely unowned wallet. So you're you're literally sending your NFTs to a wallet, but no one owns that wallet. So yeah, basically you're sending it to a wallet. 
is what, is what you're doing. All right. That's that's good to know. Yeah. Again, we ask the stupid questions here. We are not afraid of looking silly. So. <laughs> no, I mean, there's, 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 with everything in, in crypto as well, there's, ways, there's, there's obviously got to be some bad actors there as well, right? So when you look at, for example, DeFi projects back uh, or, or, or NFT projects now as well, you know, there could be some malicious code in there where they say they're burning it, but they're not actually burning it, you know, and it goes to some wall. So you need to just look at the... the smart contract code and, and when they say they're burning something, have a look, see where it's going. Is it really going to the 0000, 000, 000, 000, 000 address? And then everyone knows, okay, that is a burn address. Or is it going to someone else's wallet? You need to be careful with everything. Absolutely. Like everything else, there are always bad apples. That's how I've been explaining it to people. 